Hello friends, welcome to another episode of Blossoms Been Bourbon. My name is Mark, I'm the owner here at Creative Occasions. Welcome to my workroom. Um, tonight we are going to do a couple things in this episode. One is a very simple, sort of Asian inspired Ikebana design using pin frogs as the mechanic. And we're gonna taste E.H. Taylor small batch whiskey as soon as I can get it out of this fancy bottle that, or box that it's in. Um, Gotta love the marketing guys that came up with that, right? So this is one of those bourbons that really has garnered a lot of attention, a lot of people like, a lot of people are really, really um, trying to get their hands on it. So it has become a part of the allocated product here in the state of Virginia uh, through the ABC system here. So it can be a little bit difficult to find. My friend Michael, who was on a trip to Georgia and brought me that great Fiddler bourbon from Georgia, um, also brought this back from that trip. So Michael, thank you, sir. Um, I have had each Taylor before, but it's been a while. So we're gonna just uh, treat this as a new experience here. Um, yeah, great color in the bottle. Um, you can see that's a beautiful sort of caramel color. And you know how much I love that. I love the, tend to like the darker ones. Um, E.H. Taylor comes from the Buffalo Trace Distillery in Frankfort, Kentucky. This is a hundred proof. Um, it's named after Colonel Edmund Haynes Taylor. That's where the E.H. Taylor comes from. Um, he started distilling back at the end of the Civil War. And uh, this particular bourbon is aged in rick houses that he's given credit for um, overseeing the construction of uh, more than 100 years ago. So um, this should be good. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very nice, subtle nose. It's got um, a little bit of an oaky flavor, some orange maybe, but let's go in for the taste. Oh yeah, that's definitely like dried fruit, um, sort of the orange, a little bit of cherry, Definitely the caramel vanilla comes out. Um, you do get a little bit of sort of a pepper um, finish. Um, the finish is a little bit long. It's nice, it's really nice. And in fact, everything that I've read about this and people that I know who like it say that's a very good sipping whiskey. So uh, if you wanna enjoy one that's not crazy expensive um, and enjoy a sip, try this. All right, let's make some flowers. Um, so I mentioned we're gonna be using a pin frog. I have two different sizes of pin frogs and shapes. Part of the reason I'm doing that, these are very heavy, they're weighted. Um, they need to be in order to function as the mechanic because the flowers are gonna come up and out of these. So it's important that they be heavy. But in this container, I'm not gonna really secure these to the bottom of the container. I'm just gonna let it rest there. And the bottom of this container is a little irregular. There's a little bump in the bottom. So that little bump is causing this to not sit quite level in the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is take the other one, turn it upside down, and it's gonna just really act as kind of a counterbalance. You can probably see that from the camera above me. Uh, kind of as a counterbalance weight, just to make sure that that is nice and secure in there, okay? Um, we have to remember the water. Let's put some water in here. You wanna be sure to at least cover, cover the level of the pins because that's where the flowers are gonna be and, and the product. Um, I'm just a huge fan of sticks. You should know that by now if you've watched me much at all. And um, these are uh, dried Arborvita branches. I just love this kind of curve that comes up and out of this, um, this branch. I did edit this branch a little bit. Do you see that just slip right down on that? That's the idea. You want it just to slip right down on those pins. Um, by editing it, I mean that I took my snippers and clipped out some of the branches. So it's a little more open. Um, we might do that here a little bit too. You want it to have a nice open sense about it and not be too busy. Okay, so that it's just nice and kind of fluid there. Um, I've got another one that I'm probably gonna try to work in here too. 
And literally these just kind of push down on those pins, just like the flowers will when we get to the flowers. And they're nice and sturdy. That's a nice secure kind of mounting for, for the flowers. And because it's spring, I'm using some typical spring blooms. I've got some beautiful purple iris and some orange tulips. Um, those of you who've watched the color theory episodes, why do these two colors work together, orange and purple? Because they're complementary. I knew you were saying that at home. And they're opposite each other on the color wheel, and that's what makes them work. So let's give this a little cut here. And literally just push that right down on those pins. The pins will hold that nice and secure. I do love this foliage. I hate to get rid of it. Let's do another iris and make that happen first. Yeah, I think I'm gonna kind of like this, the flowers to come up on this side and kind of complement or kind of mirror the curve of the branch on that side. So let's do that. I'm gonna adjust that one out just a little bit. So again, from the top, it's probably gonna, you'll see that they're not in a straight line. I want them to be a little bit more, um, have some more depth to the arrangement. And this one I'm gonna pull over to this side. Shorter, but again over to this side. You can see that rocking a little bit. That's because that space on the bottom of this container is uneven. There's no harm, no foul to that. It's gonna be just fine. All right, let's put a couple of these tulips in. I want the tulips a little bit lower. I want that color to kind of be bright and vivid down in the arrangement. It's so funny, I've told you all this before. When I start these arrangements, I really have no idea where they're gonna land. This is not what I had in my head at all. The beautiful part about tulips is, um, as far as I know, they're the only flower that does this. Um, tulips actually grow in length after you cut them. So these tulips, when they first came into us, were not this long. Um, this part of the stem actually grows uh, once they've been cut. So in your arrangement, once they're cut and in the arrangement, they will also continue to grow, uh, which is a pretty cool, fun thing about that. All right, so much for the greenery. Decided not to use that. Let's go with some of this instead. Um, the manipulation of the aspidistra leaf. I'm gonna pull this all the way through because I want these tendrils to be a little more loose and flowy. I've already cut the bottom, so I'm gonna insert that there and get that to kind of come up and follow the line of this branch, kind of support the line there. And let's do one more on this side. Now I'm gonna do one more thing that will help with this kind of rocking motion that I'm having happen with this pin frog. And that is, I'm gonna use this sea glass, which happens to be purple, and I'm just gonna pour some of that over. The beauty of using the black pin frogs in this black container is you really can't see them. And if you're looking from the camera above, you can tell that they're really not obvious at all. But this is gonna add a colorful accent down inside the container. So it's gonna do a couple of things. Mechanically, it's gonna help secure this pin frog and keep it from rocking a bit. But from a color and a design standpoint, it's actually pulling the color of the iris down into the container because you can see that purple down in there. I don't know about you, but I really like that. All right, the one that is kind of poking its head up that I used as a counterbalance um, is just about disguised. It's not quite, but I'm kind of happy with that much sea glass. I'm not sure I want a lot more in there. So should we use this somewhere? Let's try to get that in there. Yeah, see how easy that was to go in? That's part of the beauty of the, sea, of the uh, pin frog, actually, is it's very easy to slip material into those pins, and the pins are so close that they just grip it right, right in place. I wanna move this over just a bit. There we go. All right. There you have it. Um, I think that really is 
going to be the finished design. I like that. I like the simplicity of it. I think that part of what I like about Asian influence design is that it really allows the flowers to shine. It really, the emphasis is on these beautiful blooms. There's not a lot of other flowers to kind of um, interfere or kind of take attention away from these beautiful iris and these beautiful tulips. Um, and especially for spring, I think it's just uh, really lovely. So um, that, Jason, that was fast. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm getting the big thumbs up over there. So um, that really does just about wrap up this uh, episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you wanna help support us, please remember to like and subscribe to the videos. Um, as of today's video shoot, uh, we are one subscriber away from 2000. So thank you guys so much for your loyalty and for continuing to watch and support us. We really do appreciate that. Um, so until next time, cheers to you and to flowers every day.